welcome, folks, to another Game Order production. Access Software Incorporated Interactive Movie. Under the Killing Moon. A Tex Murphy Adventure. Number three, to be exact. The Game Hoarder. So, they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. I'm afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlowe? Uh, dead, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. Affiliated News Services. News, news of, of the, the World. Day. As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. But their days are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults, whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. That James Earl Jones? Horror of blood. Hell no. Nah. Software presents Under a Killing Moon with Brian Keith. My God, Kidder, she sucks a mean dick. Russell Means hung like a green bean, and the boy sucked. That's right, baby. James Earl Jones. Bruce Carver. Directed by Chris Jones. Welcome to San Francisco, 2042 AD. In the moonlight, New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium. An island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute in the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective. Or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. 
Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a rundown part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm gonna move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. That's getting what I want to do. Getting out of the business. I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Oh. Enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. <laughs> I look like a fake poor. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> nah, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out! But that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Ah, like I said, I'll be leaving soon. And I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people who can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever, betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on. And you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's gonna find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Let's remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. Blue. 
So last night, after 15 years, the Colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the Colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy. Alright, here we are. A little bit different now. It's switched from the old good old third person graphic point and click adventure game to the first person. A little window. Still have some of the common commands. Look, get, move, open, talk. You can get hints, travel. And we can go walk around. Check it out. Yeah. Whoa. Then. Old trusty sidearm. Been with me since the beginning. You want some of this, huh? Bam, bam! Hey, bam, bam, bam! Bam! Bam, bam! Bam! And you! <laughs> you dingling. Hey, hey, Sonny, can you help me out? My girlfriend threw my gun out of the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just pick it up and, uh... Hey, don't... Don't point that thing up here. That's not a toy, you know. Oh, my hell. No matter how bad things got, I always had my gun. Now I've lost that, too. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those days. No shit. The scotch guard that Rudy's upholstering service put on my office chairs will stand up to anything. And I ought to know. That's the door to the street. Oh boy, mail. Let's get it. Grand reopening sale. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., the electronic shop will open its newly remodeled store and offer a veritable bonanza of bargains. Dongles, fax machines, remote controlled toys, stereos, good phones, doohickeys, stingers, whatchamacallits, and much, much more. Be sure to check out the unbelievable prices of our own line of dandy products. Remember to bring your electronic shop credit card and plan to stay late. You won't believe the deals. Oh boy, mail. A gift certificate. Entitles a holder to one free cosmetic job. Nose, boobs, penis enlargement, courtesy of the Real You Surgical Clinic. A pre-approved electronic shop credit card application addressed to the previous occupant. Just needs to be signed, stamped, and mailed. My phonograph's an old family heirloom. I love to play the classics. Cool and the Gang, Peaches and Herb. Cool. Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. 
I'll never <laughs> forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was I was watching you upholstery and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Oh, Tex, honey, I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> now I know why the Rotor Rooter Man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I gotta admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. This here is my favorite desk drawer. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for so long, I'm afraid to open them. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for so long, I'm afraid to open them. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for so long, I'm afraid to open them. Yeah, you said that. As usual, it's a mess. Nothing in here but a pen. This is probably the only writing utensil that works in the whole office. Ten dollars. Imagine ten dollars to mail a fucking envelope. I'll be pissed. This here is my favorite desk drawer. I'm gonna combine the pen with the. Application. That should give us a signed application. A pre approved. Gonna combine the stamp. Ready to mail application. Very awkward to move it around with the mouse here. Oh, great. Another incoming message that won't print out. 
If I don't get a new fax machine, I'll be out of business. Oh, great. Another incoming message that won't print out. If I don't get a new fax machine, I'll be out of business. Crimelink computer is the only valuable piece of equipment left in the office. By entering suspect information like height, weight, and hair color, I can access the suspect's personal files. This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. The UI of U was the only place that would accept me. Half the course credit was earned by locating the university. Ah, I spent weeks earning this baby. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. This piece of art is called Two Whales on a Bender. <laughs> that hutch holds a life's worth of knickknacks, patty wax, and the world's largest piece of elbow macaroni. I call this painting, uh, The Big Spill. Great-great-grandpa Murphy made it through the Depression by teaching cha-cha lessons to rich older women. He made thousands before the authorities found out he had no formal training. The office was actually a dance studio before I moved in, and Latin dancing is a Murphy family tradition. Do the bachata, the merengue, or the salsa. Crime link. We make it stick. Mutant yes or no's. Wow, we got all kinds of variables there. Crime link computer is the only valuable piece of equipment left in the office. By entering suspect information like height, weight, and hair color, I can access the suspect's personal files. Pure mountain spring water is indispensable, literally. I'm out of paper cups. The scotch guard that Rudy's upholstering service put on my office chairs will stand up to anything. And I ought to know. A lot of, a lot of whack, whack a mole getting played up in there. My phone had worked perfectly if it hadn't been disconnected. closet door. All I've ever needed was a soft felt fedora, a well-tailored overcoat, and a comfy pair of sneakers. Some people know what they like and they stay with it. <laughs> That's the door to the street. Alright, let's check it out. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day, most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with a traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, that hits the spot. That's right. It definitely hits the spot. Pretty crazy, you gotta move on your own with the mouse. 
a lot different. Surprisingly, the auto post box has no graffiti on it. Maybe people around here are finally starting to respect our government and its fine agencies. The Postal Service has gotten much faster since the stamp price went to $10. I should get my credit card back tomorrow morning. Pizza bar. Francesca Lucido makes the spiciest pizza in the city. The only thing spicier than her cooking is her imagination. And right now she seems to have a thing for me. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. On the top floor of this place is where I hang my hat. It's not much, but it's better than... Well, it's not much. Hmm, it's all locked up. The only way I'm gonna get inside is by using my innate cleverness or ingenuity, or maybe a key. Open, sesame! Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raven and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Let's use some good old obliviously conversational context. Fine. How you doing, mate? I'm not in the mood for small talk. Let's be sarcastically serious. Well then, by all means, let's discuss a serious topic. A breaking, entering, and robbery serious enough for you, Murphy? Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, eight thousand dollars. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times eight thousand I lost her, it was a good deal for me. Did you get any other information from this... Emma Nimpton? She left a phone number. I called her this morning, but the line is disconnected. So do you have any leads on recovering the bracelet? No, the police are a waste of time, and I can't afford to hire a decent P.I. I guess this means you don't consider me good enough to help track down the bracelet? I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors which could come in handy. Get back here and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. 
Since I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. Alright folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Under a Killing Mood. Moon. Not to moon.